Well, welcome back, everyone, to Ferris State basketball coverage here at Courtside. Rob Bentley and Sandy Golston with you, joined by the head coach of the Bulldogs, Kurt Westendorf, 75-66, the final score. And, Coach, obviously uh, your team came out, uh, battled, competed hard here today. Yeah, I thought we did a nice job with our effort level. You know, I, I, thought, I think the third quarter was definitely the most effort that we had. We rebounded the ball a lot better than the third quarter. You know, the first quarter, you know, our offense was giving us energy, you know, but then we had that little lull in the second quarter, and we needed to bring some more energy in that third quarter. And I felt like we fought really hard the entire second half, battling on the boards, but we just kind of kind of ran out of steam those last four minutes of the game, and I think everyone in the gym kind of saw it. You know, it was that tie game. We had several opportunities, and they, they made the difference um, with the, the plays they made with about four minutes to go to the finish. So credit Parkside, they're a good team, but it was a missed opportunity by us to get a nice win. Obviously, they had a lot of experience uh, led by a uh, talented player in Alyssa Nilsson, and uh, really uh, tough to defend uh, some of the players they put on the floor. Yeah, it's really hard to guard them. You saw that entire first half. We tried to play a man-to-man -man in the first half, and that was a bad decision by my part because um, they did a great job. They moved the ball well. They, they took advantage of the mismatches as they presented themselves. They took advantage of the one-on-one -on -one opportunities as they presented themselves. So we switched it up and played them zone in the second half. And we played with more energy in the zone, so we were better connected. It kind of took them out of their rhythm for, for the most part. So, I mean, that's on me. i got to do a better job of making sure that we – we make those adjustments a little bit sooner before the lead gets up as as, hard as, it, as high as it did. Um, but yeah, they're a hard team to guard with Nelson. We just don't have a great matchup anymore for her. Not that really anybody in the league does. I mean, she's the she's the player of the year in our league last year and will probably be have a good chance to get it again this year. So she does a great job and credit to her for knocking them down, especially down the stretch in those big moments when they needed one, she got it for them. Obviously, uh, Chloe had a great ball game for you, uh, really kept you in the game, 32 points, 11 rebounds, and had a great performance, especially offensively. Yeah, it was an excellent game for Chloe to really get in her rhythm. She got in that, especially that first quarter. I think she had 12 points in the very first quarter. So getting her off to a hot start is always great. It gets her confidence rolling. You know, it was a game where she wasn't battling foul trouble at all. She did a good job staying out there on the court. We kind of went with her as long as she possibly could, tried to use some of our timeouts to give her a little bit of rest because she was in such a great rhythm. You know, she also moved the ball fairly well. You know, she ended up, looks like down there, with just four assists. Felt like it was a few more because when they started collapsing on her a little bit, she moved the ball. We kind of really did a nice job of playing inside and out. So offensively, not too many things that you can say were done poorly when she was touching the basketball. Obviously, uh, here in the game, uh, you mentioned that third quarter. You have to sometimes expend so much energy. It uh, mm -hmm. doesn't leave a whole lot left uh, going in uh, to the fourth quarter and down the stretch. Yeah, I think you saw that. I felt like we had pretty good energy at the start of the fourth quarter as well. Like we were still kind of coming back and closing the gap down to, I think we tied it up at one point. But then you, say, you can see it in the shooting numbers, two for 16 from the field in the fourth quarter and one for 10 from three. And some of those two for 16 were pretty point blank layups that you really need to be able to knock down. You know, I can understand might not, maybe not having your legs on a three ball late in the game, but we got to do a better job of finishing those close, easy ones. So it's something to learn from. And I mean, the kids that were out there, they were giving it their all, you know, so I, I can't credit their effort, but um, you know, it just kind of stinks when you run out of steam there at the end. Well, Coach, uh, obviously uh, next week back on the road, uh, two, two more tough games here in the GLIAC as they all are against Saginaw Valley and Wayne State. Yeah, I haven't really started turning my attention to them too much. We we're kind of really focused on this week, but I know that Saginaw, they've been missing their best player for a little while or one of their leading scorers. they got two players that kind of a, a good one-two punch, and Zeriki and DePerry. Zeriki was injured for a little while, and she's back now, and it's always tough to get a win in their gym. You know, and Wayne State has a lot of new players in the lineup. They only have a couple. I know Becca Fugate is back, and that's about it from their, from their starting lineup before. So we'll start paying attention to them a little bit. Me tomorrow, the team on Monday. All right, we know we got those challenges, but if we go get two good GLIAC road wins, we're still setting ourselves up for a good, strong second half of the league. So we're looking forward to getting back and getting another, another opportunity. Well, Coach, thanks for the time, and uh, we'll talk to you again soon. All right, thank you, Rob.